Good evening, King David. Even though we are, aren't live and I can't physically see you guys, I pray that you are well and that you're doing great tonight. It is um, my pleasure to have the opportunity to bring you the Bible study tonight. And I would like to give honor to um, our pastor, Senior Pastor Johnny Goldsmith, for the opportunity to do that. Also, I would like to take a few minutes to wish him a happy birthday. His birthday is tomorrow, and I wanted to take the opportunity to wish him happy birthday. I normally get his birthday wrong. It's normally, I think it's normally on the 10th, but it's, of course, it's on the 9th, June 9th. So happy birthday. Before we go forward, let's just um, enter into a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for God giving the word, uh, God, tonight. I pray that your people receive and be better on tomorrow. I pray, Lord God, that they keep this word and graft it in their hearts. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, thank you and amen. So let's move on to the lesson. Um, Pastor Goldsmith challenged us to teach on the body of Christ. We took um, the thought from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, excuse me, the 1 Corinthians, yeah, 12th chapter, 13th verse. Um, for one, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We as a body should all have that one spirit. And tonight I would like to talk about the spirit of love, the body of Christ embodying of the spirit of love. Our scripture tonight will be in the book of Luke, Luke the 10th chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. But before we get there, I would like to talk to you about being unconsciously biased. To define that, bias means a prejudice or favor of or against one thing, one person, or a group of people compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. That is the definition of bias. A prejudice or favor of or against one thing, a person, or a group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair, to be biased, to be biased. Unconscious bias is defined as thoughts of feelings that we are not directly aware of that influence our judgment. To be unconsciously biased means thoughts or feelings that we are not directly aware of that influence our judgment. When we are unconsciously, unconsciously biased, it is triggered by our brain automatically making quick judgments and assessments. And those judgments and assessments are influenced by our background, by our personal experiences, by society stereotypes, and by our culture. Let me say that once again. Unconscious bias is triggered by our brain automatically making quick judgments and assessments. Those assessments and those judgments are influenced by our backgrounds, by our personal experiences, by our society stereotypes, and by our culture. Let me give you some examples of unconscious bias. Have you ever met a new coworker or anyone uh, in, met someone new and they had the same name of someone that you had a bad experience with? And as soon as you hear their name, those bad experiences are triggered and you're looking at the new person, but you're thinking about 
the person that you had the bad experience with just because they share the same name. Unconscious bias. The second example of unconscious bias I would like to present tonight is that have you ever saw a young girl and she has five kids, like they're walking behind her like ducklets? No, we would think, wow, she got five kids. She must went from man to man to man after man. People would think, oh, she's on welfare. Or she didn't know how these get kids. You know, we've heard people say, do you know how you get children? She can't take care of them. She has to be on government assistance. Why would she have five kids? She don't know what it takes to get kids. Does she know what birth control is? Unconscious bias. I personally know someone that has five children. And she's single. But all her children have their, 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 their they, she have different fathers. But when she had the children, she was married to those fathers. None of them are illegitimate children. Her first husband was incarcerated. Her second husband died. And her third husband divorced. So to see her and see her five children, you would think that she would, she would know how children came. Well, she took holy matrimony oath to her and her husband, and they had children. Unconscious bias. We see people with cars, nice clothes, nice houses, purses, and we think they're rich. They're rich. They, they, we put them in a different category and on different level. When basically, it could be that they have been good stewards with their money. That they have not spent their money unwisely, but they've saved their money for those nice cars, nice houses, nice clothes, purses. Could we say that they could be just an average individual that have paid their tithes, have paid themselves, have sold a seed, and simply saved their money. Unconscious bias. Our uh, Bible study tonight, as I first stated, is coming out of the book of Luke. So if you would, please turn to Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. And it reads, And Jesus answered, answering and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the same place, came down, looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever you spend, more, when I come again, I will repay thee. The first thing that I noticed in the scriptures that for tonight was the reference to this man. The Bible describes him as that certain man. It does not have a name for the man. So I have been taught um, in church when 
they don't have a specific name that you insert your name in the place of that man. But the Bible does specifically say a certain man. Another word for certain is special. Certain means special. Certain also means peculiar. Excuse me, not peculiar, peculiar, particular. And certain also means specific. So at this time in the scripture, the man has found himself uh, on the road from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho. And he has found himself that he has fallen among thieves. These, uh, these thieves are people that meant him no good. And they took the things that wasn't theirs. The scripture says that he fell among these thieves, which makes me understand that he was in company of a group of people that stole from him. He knew these people. He was in company of these people that stole from him. Have you ever been robbed? Have you ever been beaten? Have you ever been done wrong? Have you ever been left? Have you ever been dealt with like with people by people like this? The ones that you knew that had your back? The one that you knew that y'all was down like four flats? People that you thought that will go to the end of the earth with you. But these people stole from him. The people that turned their back on you, they took your blessing. They took your stuff. They took your confidence. Can you identify with this man? Can you identify with his issue and his problem? Have you been, um, been among those that have betrayed you? And you thought you were all good, that it was all good. Y'all had the greatest relationship, but it turned around that they robbed you. They wounded you and they left you for dead. You are that certain man. You are that particular man. You are that special man. You are that Pacific man. Sometimes we are those special, particular Pacific people. And as um, the scripture says, that he had been left for dead. Were you left for dead? Did that particular crowd leave you for dead? But I must pose this to you. That the scripture says that he was left, they left him half dead. That don't mean dead. Half dead means that you still got a chance. You still have an opportunity to come out of what you've been in, to recover for what you've been through. So being half dead is better than being dead. So God can work with your half dead. The enemy thinks that he got him this time. He thought that he had you that time. But there is hope. Let's continue. In verse 31, it says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed over on the other side. Chance means, the word chance means possibility of something happen, happening. So the priest, and also verse 32, let me add that together. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked at him, looked on him and passed by the other side. So you have the priest and you have the Levite. 
right? Okay, so chance means possibility of something happen. So you have these two people possibly have a chance to help the man that is has been half dead. All right, so let's look at the priest and the Levite. The priest and the Levite are representations of the church. There are two people that were in the church. The priest probably has an elevated um, position in the church and he feels that he has too much of important duties to do in the church to have time to fool with this man. The Levite. The Levite is a person that works in the church. Levites were um, important, had important roles in the church. They were always in the church. They took care of the church things. This Levite probably recognized the man. He probably recognized, but remember, he ain't been in church in a while. He probably knows the crowd that he was with and says, I told him not to hang out with them people. I told him them people was wrong for him. And look where he is now. Look at his situation. He should have came to church. COVID was over. It's good. He should have came to church. This priest and this Levite, not only did they pass by, but they went to the other side of the road. Both of them, the scripture says that they looked at the man. They had to recognize who he was or know <clears throat> they look in his face and could tell his situation was not a happy situation, that his situation was dire, that his situation was uh, at a worst case because the man was half dead. They could recognize your situation. Have you been in the uh, uh, presence of people that could recognize that you were dead? And they were in the church, or they were your neighbor, or they were your best friend. But they walk on the other side of the road and left you there. Can you recognize, can you um, see the predicament that this man is in? And that the priest had passed over on the other side? The priest these are pre this is a priest, this is a Levite, this is the church. The church did not show love. The church did not show compassion. The church did not help. I'm beckoning that tonight that the church, that we as the body of Christ, I belong to the most loving church, King David Baptist Church. People love, I, I know I do. I, I know I, I am a member of the best loving church. But the body, the church, the body of Christ, we need to love and reach out and show compassion to those. Why did they, why did the church, why did the priest and the Levite cross over to the other side of the road? The Bible does not say. Can we venture? to say maybe it was unconscious bias? Did they think this person deserved to be in the ditch? Did they think this person should not have been hanging out with that particular crowd? Should he have known better? Should he have been in church most faithfully? I pose to you that maybe this man was a faithful member of the church. Maybe he was witnessing to this crowd and the crowd turned on him. Maybe he was showing love. And you know, love is an action word, action word. Maybe he was showing love to this crowd and they turned on him. And that happens. That happens to church, to church people that reach out to others, a lot of times as we reach out, we are not received, but we still should reach out nonetheless because it is our duty 
as the church to love regardless. The priest and Levite did not know this man. They did not know that this man was an innocent man on the road from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. They did not know this man did not ask to be robbed. He didn't ask to be beaten. He didn't ask to be half dead. How dare they not reach out to this man? And that is what I don't want the church to do, um, to pass by on the other side. We as the body of Christ must love like Jesus loved. We will encounter people that don't believe as we do. We will encounter people that don't live as we do. We will encounter people of different races, cultures, and backgrounds. We will encounter people that live alternative lifestyle. But that doesn't matter. The body still must show love. Verse number 33 talks about, again, it says a certain Samaritan. So the Samaritan has significance in this uh, study as well. Now, Samaritans were people that you did not associate with. You did not, they were, they were uh, mixed breed people. They married um, in different people in their race, in their race. So they were considered Samaritans. And Samaritans in that day, you did not associate with a Samaritan. You did not have relations with a Samaritan. So if anybody that's supposed to walk by this person would, would have been a Samaritan because it was understood that they did not commune or connect with others. But this particular Samaritan, hallelujah, this particular man of God, this particular person, this particular special person, particular person, saw the man on his journey and he had compassion on him. And he went to him and he bound up his wounds by pouring oil and wine. And he set him on his own beast and he brought him to an end and took care of him. He just didn't drop him off. He took care of him. He took the time to take care of him. The church took the time, should take the time to take care of those. That's why we have clothes drives. That's why we give out boxes of food. That's why we um, show love to the community. Through, the, through that way. And we should also show love by not showing unconscious bias. But this particular Samaritan, uh, the, uh, verse 35 says, and on the morrow he went, when he departed, he took out two pence, gave him to the host, and said unto them, take care of him, and whatsoever you spend more, when I come again, I will repay this Samaritan took care of this man. He had compassion on the man. He put the man on his own beast. He had took the man to the inn. I'm sure he had his own room. And he let him uh, uh, bandage up his wounds. And the next day when the Samaritan left, he gave the host money. And he told him if he requires anything else, I'll pay you when I come back. So this Samaritan had good credit because the host didn't say, no, 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 you got to pay me before you leave, bro, man. No, the Samaritan said, I will pay you when I come back. So the Samaritan had good credit with the host and he had a good heart and he showed love. He showed compassion. He showed that I don't have to know who you are to love you. I don't have to be in your circle to love you. We don't have to be down like four flats to love you. 
we should take the example of the Samaritan tonight. And we should love regardless. We should show compassion. We should look after those that need help. And we should open up our arms to those that need a place, safe place. Because truly the church is a safe place. I just wanted to share with you tonight the story and the thought of how we think about people and things and to not be unconsciously biased, but to show love in all situations. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you and I love you. And I see you next time. Bye-bye.